Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make animated gradient backgrounds inside of After Effects. Now, normally this is when I would show you an example of what I'm talking about, but you guys see it every week in my intro, so here we go. Hey guys, what's up? It's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So like I said in the intro, and like you saw in the intro, we're gonna be making animated gradient backgrounds inside of After Effects. You got two colors, or as many colors as you want, and they're just kind of rotating around and just moving, so you have a dynamic looking background with your animations, your logo, whatever you want over the top. And we're gonna be doing it entirely inside of After Effects. I'm gonna show you from start to finish exactly how I create it. I've been having a lot of people ask about my intro and how I created it, and I might show how I created my entire intro eventually, but for now we're just gonna focus on the background, the animated gradient going on. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say that I do try to stream every Tuesday and Sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash bravitym, so make sure you're jumping over there and dropping a follow and catching a live stream if you're interested. But without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and create these backgrounds. All right guys, here we are inside of After Effects, a completely blank project. We just got to create a new composition. We're going to leave it with these settings here. 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. Sounds good. Hit OK. Now it is time to just begin. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new solid. So bam, bam. And I normally like to make this white. So make it a white solid just like that. And that is going to be your background. Then the next step is probably something that you guys haven't experimented much with inside of After Effects, and that is working in 3D. So if you come down to your layer here, you'll see we've got the white solid we just created. And you'll see these little switches over here. And one of them has a little box next to it. And if you do not see these, you can right click up here in this column. And you just want to go to columns and you want to make sure that switches is on. And if switches is on, then you'll see this little box here that you can select and boom. Now your white solid is a 3D layer. And the reason we did that is because we need to add in lights. The gradient that you see going on is different colored lights in the project moving around and lights only interact with 3D layers. So we have to make our background a 3D layer and then we can go up here to layer new and we can create a new light. So right there, bam, layer new light. We're going to click on that. You can name it whatever you want. Let's call this blue light just like that and the light type you want it to be a spotlight the color you can make it whatever you want I'll make it kind of close to the gravity blue just kind of like uh, good enough right there close enough and we can leave all the intensity and all this stuff just like that we'll go ahead and adjust it based on how it looks in the composition but if you hit okay you'll immediately see you're greeted with a crazy looking uh, effect here with just darkness and then a blue light and if you click here you can kind of move the light around so we're going to move it up here and over here in the corner off screen and then this little line that's going to the anchor point here this is where your light is looking so you'll see if we kind of move it around like here you can point it wherever you want we're going to point it into the top corner of our project just like that and I kind of want the light to spread out a little bit more so we're gonna go ahead and hit the drop down on our blue light over here go to light options and we're gonna mess with the cone angle so it's at 90 or 90 degrees here we're gonna go ahead and up that a little bit and as you can see the cone gets bigger and the blue light fills in more area there that's looking pretty cool just like that now what we want to do is just duplicate our blue light here and then you can leave it like that if you want. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on one of these and we're going to go ahead and rename it to pink light. There we go. So pink light, we're going to click on it. We're going to go up to layer and we're going to go to light settings. And this one, you can change the color to pink. Now, I just duplicated this so that the settings say kind of the same, but you can go up to layer and then create a new light and just make it pink. You're going to get the same exact thing. And now what we're going to do with this pink one is we're going to move it way over here. So let me move these. Uh, it's kind of hard to move stuff in 3D. You've got different axes here. So like there's the Y axis then the X axis and then the Z axis. And it moves kind of really weird inside of 3d but we'll go ahead and move it off screen like this and then we're gonna point it back at our project just like that let's go ahead and make it spread out a little bit maybe move it away because it's a little intense and there we go we've got this cool little gradient look going on this is very similar to if you would have just gone into your effects typed in ramp and then selected the gradient ramp and set these two colors it's a very similar effect but the difference is is that we can now mess around with our ramp in a really weird 3d way so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to our blue light and we're going to begin to keyframe the light. So what we want to do is we want to go to um, transform and not the light options. And we want to keyframe the point of interest and the position. The point of interest is where it's looking. The position is obviously the position. And we want to move forward a little bit in time. Let's go ahead and say, let's just do 2000 frames for now. And let's go ahead and move our blue light like way over here. 
and then have it look this way. And I think we need to move it back a little bit. Um, you'll get used to moving things around in 3D, but it can be very weird and jarring when you're first working with it. Here we go, just like that. How's that? That's not bad. Let's go ahead and leave it there for now. It's very strange working in 3D with these lights. So then we're going to grab this light now and we're going to do the exact same keyframe. So we're going to go to pink light, hit the drop down, go to transform, point of interest and position, move our playhead back to the beginning when we added those keyframes, and then move to the exact same place where these keyframes are on the blue light, just like that. We can also use these buttons down here to move to the next keyframe. And now we know we're at the same keyframe as the blue light. And we're going to grab this pink light and now we're going to move it around as well. And just like I said earlier, it is very strange moving these lights in 3D. You gotta kinda mess around with the axes and make sure you're moving them in the right way. As you can see, we're getting kind of a dark look here. And I think that's because of this blue light here. Yeah, it's kind of in a weird, a weird spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this a little bit. Let's see, see if I can get it a little bit brighter here. There we go. There, that's looking a little bit better. Move our point of interest. Now let's mess with the pink light. Pink light's looking a little dull now in comparison to the blue. So let's see if we can't adjust this in 3D a little bit to make it a bit more exciting. Let's see what we can do. There we go. That doesn't look bad right there. So as you can see, we've got our lights now flipped to different corners now. And now if we go back to the beginning, you'll see that the lights now move as we play. So that's a little bit long, 2000 frames. I now see that. We're gonna go ahead and go to like 500 maybe. And let's go ahead and move our keyframes to the same spot here. And now let's go ahead and play this again. And we're gonna see that our lights move. It's gonna take a little bit to render, but once it's done, we will watch this. All right, and there we go. We've got our lights now moving. As you can see, if we watch the keyframe, you can see that they slowly move and almost switch sides. So that's still a little bit long. Let's go ahead and move them in kind of like this. I don't know why I tried to go 2000 frames at first. <laughs> Just felt right. I guess it because I wasn't zoomed in very much, but there we go. Let's go ahead and play this again. Let it render through, get these lights moving a little bit quicker. There we go. So now you can see they're moving a little bit quicker. So we've got this blue light, we've got this pink light, and they just kind of move around and switch sides, which is really cool. Something else that you can do is you can collapse these lights here. And let's go up to layer again and create a new light again. But instead of a spotlight, let's create an ambient light. And let's make this ambient light white just like that. And as you'll see, everything gets super white. We're gonna move this light to the bottom here and we are going to turn our light intensity way down. So let's go ahead and move this light intensity way down like this. So we're just kind of brightening up the corners a little bit. So as you'll see, if I turn off the ambient light, anytime there was like a dark corner, like down here, you'll see there are these dark corners. This ambient light just kind of brought everything up and made it a little bit more bright. This is kind of how it is in my intro, so everything's very bright and not uh, not having dark corners or anything, but there you go. As you can see, we've now got moving lights, moving all around, and uh, it's uh, not getting dark in any of the corners. So, for my intro, what's really going on is these lights are actually moving around like crazy. So, after the pink light kind of moves down here, it then comes all the way around kind of to where the blue light was kind of like that and then the blue light moved all the way around down to the pink light and then looked up like that pink lights looking a little intense there so let's go ahead and uh, push it away kind of like that there we go so then the lights switch around again so let's go ahead and play this Let's actually have them move a lot faster, kind of like they do in my intro. So let's bring this in here, bring this in there, bring this in there, and then bring that in there. So there we go. As you can see, the lights move around and they're kind of going in a circle now. So what goes on in my intro is just this just like that you see how the lights are moving around in circles it's doing that and it does it multiple times they move around like crazy that's also what goes on in my outro whenever the video is over if you pay attention to my outro in the background behind where it says to subscribe and where the watch a new video is watch a different video there's also lights moving around like this so it's kind of cool having this as like part of your brand standards and part of your branded design because then you can just use it as backgrounds behind all kinds of things so now if we bring in our logo here just like that we can go ahead and put it right there on top 
and you can have your logo animate in. I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to do that because I've done that in many tutorials. If you want to see how to animate a logo, you can find it in a lot of my videos. But there you go. You got this really cool looking thing of like lights moving around your logo. And if you want to do something insane and take this to the next level, you can turn your fake logo into, and I guess it's not a fake logo for you, but you can turn the logo into a 3D layer as well. And you'll see that the, uh, the logo is now being affected by the lights as well. So if you move lights around your scene, anything that you set to be a 3D layer is going to accept the lights. And you can mess around with that a lot. Like in the material options, you can set it to cast shadows. So this goes on in my uh, intro as well. And that'll start throwing shadows onto different things. We don't really have a solid for you to see the shadows on here, but you can see you can mess around with how much uh, the shadows cast, and then you can mess around with the uh, ambient light. You can mess around with how much the light is diffused on your object here, your uh, specular intensity. Um, you can make it look like metal or not. So let's go ahead and do that just like that. And there you go. You got now this cool logo that's being affected by the lights that are going around it. I think that is a really cool effect right there. So this is kind of what's going on in my intro. Um, I have this, these lights moved around and my logo is drawing on and the logo while it's drawing on is being affected by these lights. But this is a really cool effect here that you can add in to uh, your Twitch streams for like your starting soon screen. Maybe your, your starting soon screen for Twitch is your logo and then uh, there's lights moving around it. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for how to make some awesome moving animated gradient backgrounds inside of After Effects. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do create something using this awesome technique that I showed you, as always, make sure you send it to me on Twitter or post it in the Discord. I always have a Discord link in the description of every single one of my videos. You can join the Discord and there's a channel in there where you can post your work when you create awesome things using these techniques. But once again, I do try to stream every Tuesday and Sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash BravityM. And I hope you guys jump over there and drop a follow and maybe catch a live stream if you're interested. But I will see you guys in the next video.